welcome Minneapolis Junior Senior High School fans to Gypsum, Kansas, the site of Southeast of Saline Junior Senior High School. We're here tonight for another league contest. Lady Lions being hosted tonight by the Southeast of Saline Trojans. 5 0 Southeast of Saline Trojans against the, uh, or 6 0 Southeast of Saline Trojans, excuse me, against the 5 1. Lady Lions. Lady Lions stumbled last Tuesday uh, hosting in Republic County at home by a score of 41 to 26. And uh, need to make up some ground tonight in both the league and the substate standings. Uh, Southeast of Saline is 6 0 and beat Sacred Heart by a score of 45 to 36 last week without the services of one of their key players, Courtney Sager. Hey, Courtney Sager was in the hospital, had some surgery, or uh, was in the hospital anyway earlier this week. Uh, her time on the floor will probably be limited, even though they didn't say she wouldn't play. I would think she would not start, but will play. And then another guard had with the team, Arbery uh, Knox, which uh, gets uh, a few minutes in, so their depth at guard might be. She was a regular, if I remember. I kind of thought she was, but Coach Weatherman didn't think she played that much, but uh, I remembered her playing quite a few minutes. Uh, she may not start, but she minutes on the floor. This, may not have played this much this year. I don't know, right. So yeah, Minneapolis could uh, bring everything even in league play with a victory here tonight over the Lady Southeast of Saline Trojans. Uh, the purple is out on the other side. Dale's happy. He sees all this purple. That's right. I always have to be sure not wear purple when I'm playing the, <laughs> the, the Trojans of Southeast of Saline. This is the 78th game in the series. Southeast leads it 40 to 37, though Minneapolis has won the last two games. Minneapolis record at Southeast of Saline is 15 wins versus 23 losses, so it hasn't been a place that's kind to us guys, necessarily. And from what I've heard, Southeast runs the ball, and they run and press, and they fly up and down the court. So very aggressive, very quick. So. They play a lot like uh, Bloyd. It's a pretty good uh, matchup when Southeast and Bloyd get together. In Minneapolis, if we can take the pressure uh, defense, as uh, you just mentioned, Scott, and uh, play that to our advantage, get some transition baskets, they'll take off that press if we're uh, going through it and scoring on the other end. So it kind of works both ways. Minneapolis, uh, if we're patient, I doubt that there's going to be too much in the half court set if Southeast is uh, running that much. And uh, we like to run, too. We like the transition game. and easy buckets, but uh, Southeast, a uh, pretty good defensive team. Might be a little light tonight in the guard area with uh, Sager being in the hospital and uh, limited to minutes. And then Dale and I discussed the uh, Courtney Sager, or uh, Aubrey Knox had uh, quit the team. She used to get quite a few minutes on the floor uh, as we remembered in past years, but she may not be doing that this year. So could be a little short on the guard. Trojans are 2-0 in the league. Not only did they beat South Sacred Heart last Tuesday, but uh, in the last game before Christmas, they went to Beloit and won up there by a score of 60 to 43. That's that's a real life. That's not that easy. Real, yeah. yeah. Oops. Sorry, even though even though the Beloit girls have not had the season this year that they've had in the past, but they always put a, uh, their coach always puts a team on the floor. You so. betcha. So. Uh, so Dallas Cox likes to line it up and play this type of defense, kind of like what we saw the other night with uh, Republic County. Uh, they extend the defense out, guard the three-point line, and and make you put the ball on the floor. Uh, you know, if we're able to get there and uh, get to the glass and make those uh, bunnies, then uh, you've got something going for you. But Minneapolis able to capitalize on uh, the buckets in close and uh, never did really get a good look from beyond the arc. No, uh, that's it's gonna. The, the girls are gonna have to adjust after, uh, and maybe <clears throat> taking that loss and taking that loss the way they did will wake some of them up and 
Um, you know, I was talking to one of the parents that they had said that they really, one of the uh, game plans was, was to try to stop our low post play, and they did. We didn't have much in the low post at all. Um, one and, of our leading scorers is Ali Steinbrock, and she had very little points. Yeah, so, you know, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments <clears throat> uh, we made and uh, maybe get some of that transition game going again. So, be interesting to see how the girls come out tonight and if they come out with some spunk and some fire and uh, what they put on the floor. So. You're exactly right. We found it hard pressed to even get the ball down low in the low block. Uh, I don't. I can't think of too many times we actually got the pass down there. And then uh, with Allie not scoring hardly anything all night long, uh, JC was covered up when she was in there too. So yeah, Republic County uh, accomplished their goal and that was what they were after because uh, they were just pretty effective on the defensive end. I thought they played a pretty good game. Uh, girls defensively I thought uh, they just covered us up. Yeah. What I understand, uh, Riley Baker got hit by the crud pretty good uh, over Christmas break and really wasn't feeling quite up to snuff, full of energy and all the rest. On Tuesday night? On Tuesday night, so. Well, you know, and that explains, that could explain some as well. That, uh, that stuff knocks you to the ground pretty good, so. so. So I just uh, I felt like that uh, uh, not only did they shut our uh, shut us down the low post, but I just didn't feel like we had the energy that we've had in the past. And uh, you know that comes that comes from transition, that comes from uh, getting on the floor, going after the loose balls, and uh, they just they really uh, kind of shut us down. Yeah, they found themselves behind. I think that kind of takes the uh, wind out of your sail when you see you're behind and you just haven't had much luck with the, any easy uh, transition buckets or uh, good looks from the outside. They had to earn every point they got. And when you're used to scoring 50, 55 points a ball game and you're held uh, right at 40, it's, uh, it's depressing. And uh, as you mentioned, I don't think they really got after it after uh, they found themselves kind of in a hole and just couldn't dig themselves out. Last year was a nail biter. The Southeast Slim Minneapolis game here at Gypsum. Uh, lines won 48-43. Typical uh, Southeast Minneapolis game, especially here at, at Gypsum. It'll probably be another real hard fought game tonight. We hope the girls are up to pass. Minneapolis Lady Lions about uh, uh, just a few minutes away from the start uh, against uh, the 6 and 0 Southeast of Sweden Trojan 7 6 and 0 6 and 0 okay 6 and 0 Trojans and uh, 5 and 1 Minneapolis leading Lions so crucial game both in the league and substate standards now well, the so. girls are going to have to find uh, means in which to uh, create offense tonight as uh, they were lacking that the other night. And I'm sure if Southeast was up uh, having a look at our ball game, they're probably gonna see about the same thing Republic County put, put on us. Starting lineups for the girls contest tonight. Christine Russell, number two for Southeast. Ashlyn Macy for Minneapolis. Quite a savvy guard, Christine Russell. For Minneapolis, Kylie Gregg, two guard. Tiffany Cleveland gets the start. 5'7", senior. Kelsey Page for Minneapolis. Brooke Wells for Southeast. Quick forward. It's a three guard system mostly, but uh, we have a post for Minneapolis, Riley Baker. For Southeast, Hannah Ornimer. We'll start at the quick forward for Southeast, Purples. For Minneapolis, Allie Steinbrock, the post. And for Southeast, another Mortimer. And that would be Haley, 5'7", junior. Rounds out the starting lineups for Southeast and Minneapolis. I never have figured it out. I assume they're related to the Delphus Mortimer somehow, but I don't know. 
Don't know. I doubt it, but <laughs> I could be wrong. If they are, I don't know the connection. Well, I don't either. That's I don't know any family down here. That's why I said I doubt it, but I probably am wrong. Me and names don't get along too well sometimes, so. We're just getting ready to tip this game off. As uh, Dale mentioned, a very important game for uh, Minneapolis to get back on the winning track uh, in the league play and uh, substate play. It, the records uh, count all the way through four seedings. At the end of the year, Minneapolis would like to get right back up uh, in a first place tie up there. I don't know if the public county has been beat yet or not. But we find ourselves uh, not in the top spot anymore, and uh, I'm sure the girls want to rectify that here tonight. Allie Steinbrock will jump center for Minneapolis and Tiffany Cleveland for the Purples, and we're underway. Tip is controlled by Minneapolis. Kelsey Page, man to man defense by Southeast, and they're playing the three point line right out on us. Drag, dribble drive. Carried the ball, dribbles into the defense as it's tied up. Possession arrow to Southeast Sling. Dribbles right into the defense and uh, tie up. Now Minneapolis with a 1 2 2 full court pressure. They pass it around. Cleveland on the backside has her shot blocked by Steinbrock. And the outlet pass to Page, and she is fouled by Hannah Mortimer. Boy, all those Southeast girls are about the same size. They're all about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, it looks like from here. Yeah, they have no size advantage on us whatsoever. No, Speed, maybe. And I thought we would be able to compete with them at, on the speed portion of this game. Minneapolis is pretty quick. And we're looking Defense. to get the ball inside to Steinbrock. They fronted her, she gets it. Now kicks it back out to Greg and she walks. Turnover Minneapolis. I guess it's going to depend on how deep they can go. Uh, how we know how deep we will go. Um, as far as uh, you know, if you can get them to uh, wear down. So. Yes, by all means, and I think the way they're sitting with their guard play, they may be uh, in a little bit of trouble there if we get into a running game here tonight. Three-point shot misses by Southeast, and Minneapolis has the rebound. Dribble drive by Baker in the lane. Shot no good. Tipped out of there by Page. And ball goes out to Gregg. And she is tripped by Haley Mortimer. So both Mortimer girls have one foul apiece. No score. Just underway here in the first quarter. Girls, Minneapolis, Lady Lions. Man-to-man -man defense by Southeast. Page, three-point shot on its way, just a little bit long. And Southeast clears the board. They're wanting to run. Greg had the ball for a minute. They're going to call a jump ball as Wells. Rick Wells come flying through there and got a hand on it. Possession arrow to Minneapolis, so we'll play it in. And as you mentioned, Scott, here's that full court pressure. And they're looking to trap at half court. Macy isn't going to have anything to do with that, but dribbles a ball off, I thought, her foot, but it went off southeast opponent's foot, and we will play it in. Steinbrock out to Macy. Greg around the horn to Page. Shot, good. Kelsey Page with a two-pointer just inside the three-point arc. Now they have numbers all of a sudden. They beat us down the court as Tiffany Cleveland. You're right, they can get down the court quick. 2-2. Two -two. And they are a physical team as Christine Russell just showed you there. Macy with the ball. Gets it off to Greg on the left wing. Page again, dribble drive, baseline, jump shot, good. She's hit two from there. This nice one shot. A bit of a dribble drive, which uh, looked really good. So. Boy, we have got to get back, and they're just killing us. Cleveland with another layup, and Southeast 
is beating us down the court. No foul. Jeez. Russell bumps into Pay or Macy knocks her down, but no call. Bragg has the ball out on top. <coughs> Being guarded by Mortimer. Now the steal by Wells. And she kicked it, I believe. That should be no. Oh, I had it the other way. I but, too, but that may have been, uh, we had it the other way down there as well. So it may have been. Uh, <laughs> Southeast to play it in. Mortimer, long shot, no good. Wow, nice rebound by Baker right there. We throw it away. And There's a reach foul in foul on Hannah Mortimer. That's her second. And number 12 will report in right away. That's Kelsey Hayes. As Mortimer has two quick fouls here in the first two minutes, three or minutes Shelby of this contest. There's two, there's two number 12, so I bet it's, I bet it's Shelby Sheets, a senior. That'd be my guess. Sorry about that, Mike. Well, she's fairly tall. You're probably right. Probably the senior. Boy, we cannot get it inside. We've tried a couple times, and they're fronting Steinbrock. Now southeast with the ball. Man to man, no, excuse me, we're in a zone. Entry pass back out to Russell. Three point shot on its way, no good. Boy, they do crash the boards, don't they? Nice hustle by Brooke Wells right she there. She walked. Walked Turnover southeast, and Minneapolis will play it in. Walker and Crossan head to the scorer's desk. And we'll check in for Steinbrock and Greg. I would not think we would go too deep tonight in a bench, but we'll see how good a shape the girls are in. Page in the backcourt being guarded by Brooke Wells. That's twice Wells That's a, is almost. She's been fouled a couple times. And there we foul her. That's uh, Coach Weatherman's asking for the foul out at half court where the reach in foul by Russell or Wells was not called. Now the foul as she was shooting, Brooke Wells was shooting. Free throw is no good. The foul was on Baker, her first. And first team foul. Southeast with three. Four to four. Wells, second free throw, no good. Crossan has the board, gets it off to Walker. Back out to Macy, dribble drive in the paint, she goes, scoop shot, no good. And the rebound is by Shelby Sheets. Nice dribble penetration there by Macy. Couldn't quite get her to finish, but nice drive. Tight defense by Walker on the outside. Russell with the ball above her head. So back out front to Tiffany Cleveland. Russell dribble drive baseline. Other side, Mortimer shot, no good. And Cleveland cleans up again on the back side. Tiffany Cleveland with three baskets right there in that spot. Walker on the left wing. Gets it off to Macy. Dribble drive being covered up by Russell. Back to Baker. Not much movement. Now crossing in close. Shot over the top of the rim and no good. Russell with the ball being guarded by Macy now. Tiffany Cleveland has to rescue it on the baseline. Sheets, long shot, no good. Macy has the board. Gets it off to Page. Stops and pops, no good. And Mortimer has the rebound. Three white shirts for Southeast. Crossing that time, crossing lost. Russell, down low to Cleveland. That's she walked, she good call. Turnover Southeast, Minneapolis will play it in. There's gonna be a timeout as the action is fast and furious. 30 second timeout, we'll take one too. Minneapolis trailing Southeast, six to four. 
Salt City Pharmacy has brought you quality professional pharmaceuticals since 1963. Joe and Amber Wool will help you with your medications, durable medical equipment, cosmetics, gifts, and greeting cards. Your hometown pharmacy, City Pharmacy in downtown Minneapolis. I'm Mike College Salina, along with Fox News Talk, KINA. We'll be helping bring you coverage of all MHS football games and boys and girls basketball, along with some volleyball, wrestling, baseball, and softball events. Two thirty-five left, first quarter action. Minneapolis will play it in. Page with the ball in the back court. Just a little token pressure. Southeast looking to trap, and they can't trap Kelsey. As Macy has it down low to cross and shots up and in. Nice shot there by JC, right off the glass and in. Six to six. Now Minneapolis with that one, two, two. Zone trapping defense, Southeast having no problem with it so far. Russell baseline drive all the way in she goes. Wells baseline shot, no good. Tipped out of there by Crossan. Now we have numbers. Baker, left side, shot, no good. And Wells has the rebound, gets it off the, all the way down to Russell. Shot off the glass, no good. Page has the rebound from Minneapolis. Now Macy. That's about the third time that they have <laughs> not gotten, uh, that Brooke Wells has come close to getting a foul and no call. Walker, long three-pointer, no good. Crossing with the board. And there's the foul. The biggest player on the court clears the board. It will be on <laughs> Wells. Ashland Mason. Nice job by Ashland yes. to come in and small, small on the floor. She can rebound well. Emma Giles reports for duty, and Baker will get a breather. We'll play it in. That's the fourth team foul on Southeast. Minneapolis with just one. Page will throw it in. Crossing out front to Walker. In the lane she goes, shot, no good. Crossing has it for a minute and then it squirts out of there. Shot, no good, and Cleveland just is a heck of a rebounder. There's another Cleveland. I, I that's number see. five. That was, that's the other Cleveland. Yeah, other Cleveland. <laughs> Good night. So two Clevelands and two Mortimers. Two Mortimers. So that's Heather Cleveland, number five. That shot is no good. First free throw as Cleveland. Gonna have to start calling her first name, Tiffany Cleveland. Misses the front end of two, and she misses the second one too. Crossan has good position and the rebound for Minneapolis. Now Southeast has dropped back into a 2-3 zone. Tied up at six with 56 seconds left in the first quarter. Macy, ball's chopped out of there by Russell. She's got a layup. Ball hawking. Turnover in Minneapolis. And there's Page. Shot good from the elbow. Little 10 footer, Kelsey Page. Oh, wow. Boy, they just, they kill us. Great to press again. And that time it's Heather Cleveland. They've got eight points off of just transition baskets. No way. Russell all the way in. She is fouled. That's way to break a tight game open quick, isn't it? Yes, it will. 12 to eight all of a sudden. Russell all the way to the rack. Score the basket and she will get the and one. Macy's first personal foul. Our point guards have to be double cautious on taking care of that ball. Free throw is good. All the way in she goes and she is fouled. Thank goodness. Brooke Wells, I believe. And that's her second personal foul here in the first quarter. 
But as you noticed, Scott, and you mentioned it earlier, how deep will they go? Uh, evidently, they have enough to uh, go fairly deep. Two girls in foul trouble already on Southeast. Free throw by Page, good. 13-9, Southeast. 5.6 seconds left here in the first. Second shot, shot coming by Page. It is good also. Southeast to play it in. Sheets, three-quarter court to go. Russell with the ball, turns it loose. And the shot is wide of the backboard. I'm surprised she's got some arm, yeah. though. I'm surprised she, she got it up. there, but she yeah, did. She did. She's got some arm to put it up there. So at the end of one, 13 to 10, Southeast is leading with the lead. We will take a break. You're listening to 910KNA.com as well as uh, <laughs> Eagle Communications. Eagle, Eagle Channel 8, Minneapolis. Sorry about that, guys. Tonight's game coverage is brought to you by Santa Fe Carpet where a new carpet starts at a buck fifty per square foot. Santa Fe Carpet now has Soft Sense by Bliss, the softest, smartest carpet ever in 48 colors. Salina's bottom line carpet price, Santa Fe Carpet, four blocks south of St. John's Military School. A car accident, high winds damaged your property? To protect you, the Scott Osherman Agency is the place to go. American Family Insurance has been providing security and peace of mind for over 80 years. Call the Scott Osherman Agency in Minneapolis, your American Family Insurance agent. Welcome back to Gypsum, Kansas. Lady Lions on the road tonight in their blue against Southeast Slim's white and Southeast Slim with the ball. Minneapolis uh, still man-to-man -man defense. Russell all the way to the basket. That ball is tipped out of there by Southeast. It will be Minneapolis ball to play in. Greg, Page, Macy, Steinbrock, and Baker. And they aren't, they are not afraid to print the press on them and they do quickly. They overplay and uh, try to create the uh, transition game. Off the turnover. Russell with the hawking defense on Macy. Inside close, Steinbrock. And traveling is the call. We do get the ball in down on the low block and Allie cannot convert. Russell with the ball in the corner. She goes right around three defenders. And she is a little bit out of control, and the player control foul is called. Nice job by Allie Steinbrock to step in there. And she does a great job right there. I believe it was that on Russell. Yes. yes. One and one from here on the lines. Baker with the ball. Gets it across the timeline and evidently double had a dribble. double dribble on the other side. Coach Weatherman says the ball was tipped. That's it was, but it uh, wasn't the call. Sheets plays the ball into Russell. Walking dribble. Now Sheets on the left wing. Gets it off to Cleveland, down the lane she goes. Shot off the glass, no good. The other Cleveland had a hand on the ball and tipped it out. Now Russell finds oh, Cleveland nice on the pass. baseline. Back to Sheets. Cleveland with a shot. It's good. They Heather the Cleveland. Quite well. Oh, yeah. They do. Great ball movement. So. Macy gets it off to Steinbrock. She is fouled by number 22, Kristen Conley, who I thought played quite a bit in years past, but uh, this is her first. Minutes on the floor here in the second quarter due to the foul trouble of uh, Brooke Wells. Steinbrock will shoot two. First one rims off. Walker back in. Greg gets a breather. 16-10. Was that 15? 
That one's good. That's a 15, I believe. 15-11 now. They beat us down again. This time the pass goes out of bounds or Cleveland would add another basket. We have got to hustle back on defense. Southeast throws over the top rather well. Walker with the ball. Being guarded by Sheets. Almost a problem there. Gets it off to Macy. Now down to Page. Nice pass. Actually, Macy with a nice pass to Kelsey Page, and the basket's up and in. Minneapolis gets back to within two. Nice overplay there by Ashlyn Macy. Sheets to play it in. Minneapolis back to it's a one possession contest here, and she throws behind her, out of bounds it goes. And that's turnover southeast. Second down down the floor, they've thrown a turnover, so come back to lines. Anna Mortimer back in the contest as Russell gets a breather. She's been in since the starting tip. First break she's gotten. We almost throw it away. Steinbrock chases it down, gets it off to Macy. Ashland left wing Walker. It'd be nice to see Bailey hit a three ball. Baker back to Macy. Two pointer on its way. No good. Off the heel of the rim. Cleveland will go all the way in. And the first thing you learn in playing basketball, you have got to stop the ball, and we're allowing them to get all the way to the basket. Cleveland is fouled. We'll shoot two. Kelsey Page with her first personal and out. Uh, Dale, you said it right there. She's quick. This whole team's quick. Free throw on its way. No good. The only luxury we have so far is that Southeast has not shot free throws very well at all. Well, and they kind of cooled down on their field goals, too, after they started. Nice. They missed that one also. Cleveland gets it back off to Cleveland in the paint. Back out to Mortimer. Jump shot no good, and Steinbrock has the rebound. Now Baker, crossover dribble, almost loses it. Wisely. And we reset the offense. Nice job by Ashlyn Macy to see that and to back it out to reset the offense. We had nothing, and it was smart play by our point guard. Page has the ball tipped on the pass by Cleveland. Goes out of bounds. It will be Minneapolis ball. 15-13. 5.03 left to go here in the first half. Walker, baseline, jump shot. No good. Page with the rebound. Stick back, no good. Now Steinbrock has it. It is good. Nice job, uh, Allie Steinbrock to get the backside rebound right there, Mike. And she ties it up at 15. Yeah, you bet. Boy, oh. she just ran right over the top of Macy. Wow. Brooke Wells comes back in. But Macy with the foul. Isn't that something? And I don't know. Who I don't have a 24, 24, do you? I don't either. So they will play it in, and that's Macy's second foul. Long shot from the corner, no good. And they get the rebound. <laughs> Cleveland in the paint gets it off to 24. Her shot is good. I didn't hear the announcer say who that was. Page in the backcourt, guarded by Cleveland. Macy, entry pass to Steinbrock. She is hacked by Cleveland. Thank you. <laughs> Tiffany Cleveland with the reach in foul will put Steinbrock at the charity stripe to shoot two. Steinbrock to shoot two here. Free throw, good. Nice shot there by Allie Steinbrock. Make the first of two. Craig back in and Crossing back in. Baker and Macy sit down. Russell back in. No, that's Cleveland's first foul, it looks like. I was hoping it was more than that. 
Thank you, Scott. Now we've got a name to go with the number 24. Free throw no good. Page in there fighting for that rebound. Tipped out of there by. A lot of body bumping going on in there, boys. Russell. Out front it goes. It's tipped by Russell, and she'll do that every time. Layup, good. Greg almost throws it away. Walker with the ball for Minneapolis. 3.53 left, first half action. Crossing back to Page, now into Steinbrock. Down low to Crossing, shot no good. A lot of bodies flying around. And there, Cleveland guys. has the rebound. They throw over the top again. Oh. This time it's tipped by Minneapolis out of bounds to I didn't see southeast. I got to watch it. I'm getting two versions. <laughs> 19 to 16, southeast to Sleeve went the lead. Wells right open in the corner for three. Doesn't even draw iron. Minneapolis chases down the loose ball in the corner. Now Walker has the ball from Minneapolis. Gets it off to Greg. Greg hadn't even had a shot yet. Now she has. Shot, no good. And that's off of Southeast knee, and it will be Minneapolis ball. Turnover's even at five here. Uh, 3.18 left to go in the first half, 19 to 16. Trojans with the lead. Minneapolis with the possession here. Greg, entry pass to Steinbrock's tipped out of there. But Greg recovers the ball for Minneapolis. Back out front to Walker. Baseline drive, Greg shot, no good. Wow. Right, they're letting them play. Russell down the lane, she goes. Outlet pass grabbed by Wells, shot by Southeast, no good. Three bodies on the ground. And, and we, we throw it away. Wow. Oh, and Russell cannot grab, get wow. the handle on the ball. It will be Minneapolis ball to play in under her own basket. Dodge a bullet right there, but three bodies, two Southeast, one Minneapolis, no call. <laughs> I hope the boys game in that rough. 19-16. Crossing out front to Kylie Gregg. Back to Page. Long shot, no good. Russell has the ball for Southeast, gets it off to Wells, right back to Russell. And that pass goes out of bounds as Russell was trying to get it down low to Heather Cleveland. Sheets and Heather Cleveland back in for the Purples. And they've taken off their press. Not too effective. Minneapolis handled the pressure fairly well, I thought. They've had better luck just pressuring the half court than anything else. And Russell is a ball hawking little guard. Steinbrock shot, no good. And we have not shot the ball well here tonight. Not in the second quarter. I felt like we did in the first quarter, did okay. But we struggled here in the second quarter. Cleveland down low, reverse layup, good. She has at least eight points, if not 10, here in the first half. Walker. 16, Southeast. Walking dribble. Gets it off to Crossan. Off to Steinbrock. Page has a look at the three, but unable to pull the trigger. Dribble drive in the lane, she goes. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> wow. Caught Page off of Minneapolis's hands on that one. Gets and all the way to the rack and is clearly hacked. off the southeast sling player's hand. And they give the ball to the Purples. Wells, Russell in the lane, shot no good. Sheets comes out of there with it. It's calling both ways as, uh, as we get a foul right there. As Kelsey Page six, picks up her second personal foul. That's Minneapolis sixth team foul. They will play it in right in front of the Minneapolis bench. Walker, or Baker will head in to give Page a break, get her out of harm's way with a minute 16 left in the first half. We don't want her getting her third foul. Russell to play it in. Entry pass to Cleveland. 
shot by White, rimming off, and Steinbrock has the board for Minneapolis. Baker has it. Being guarded by White, now the entry pass to Steinbrock, looks for the back door, out front it goes to Crossan. Now Walker has a good look at a three, but won't pull the trigger. Kylie Gregg puts the ball on the floor, and she goes for layup. Oh, no good. Gregg had the layup, missed the layup. And she had the wraparound on the rebound, and the foul's called. And the foul is called. It's Minneapolis' seventh foul, Kylie Gregg's first personal foul. Well, I miss some fouls, then. Christine Russell will go to the free throw line. For some reason, didn't think she was the one with the ball. Anyway, free throw, no good. Greg does a good job. Coach Weatherman's wanting to know why they're not calling them both ways, because they are graping us. And Walker, long shot over the rim, no good. Crossing gets the rebound off the glass. Nice shot by J.C. 21-18, 20 seconds left. First half, Russell with the ball for Southeast. Out front it goes, and looking inside, White has it now down to Cleveland, back out to Russell. Shot, good. Off balance, one hand runner. That's a heck of a shot. And we let it rip three quarter court, and that's the way the first half will end. Southeast 23 and Minneapolis 18. And we'll be back with some stats, point totals, and some comments from Dale. And an exciting second half with the Fighting Lady Lions. The Minneapolis Junior Senior High School Lionbackers are proud to continue their long-term support of the broadcast of the Lions games. Join them as they support student activities and the teachers of MJSHS. Go Lions! We're with you all the way. R&J Tax Services, the most dependable tax service in Salina, is open every Monday through Friday, 52 weeks out of the year. Have tax questions? Call R&J Tax Services in Salina. It's fast, it's furious, and it's fun. It's Minneapolis Raceway. Minneapolis Raceway has brought you exciting races to central Kansas and will continue the tradition. Minneapolis Raceway will give you and your family some of the most exciting races ever seen. Go Lions! At Lambert Insurance, Sue Clinton can make shopping for insurance easy. With insurance plans changing all the time and costs increasing constantly, getting coverage you need at affordable rates can be a challenge. But Lambert Insurance huh? in Minneapolis help. That's easy to do. Where do you go when you need There's groceries? Jeans IG. I know that one Cleveland girl Jeans has is proud 10. Jeans a sponsor of Minneapolis Sports and hopes that you'll encourage your children to be as competitive in the classroom as they are in sports. Jeans IGA, a proud sponsor of today's game. The State Bank of Delphus and Glasgow and the Ottawa County Bank in Minneapolis are locally owned community banks committed to making your banking experience as easy and personal as possible. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Brown Mackey College Salina, more than just supporting your future, supporting the future of the community. Call 1-877-557-5454 or go online to brownmackey.com. CNR Plating and Kevin's crew would like to take this time to thank their many friends and customers for making their business what it is today. CNR Plating, a Lions sports backer, wants to wish the Minneapolis Lions a great season. CNR Plating, a Lions sports backer. Salina Spring and Axle, specializing in all your suspension, alignment, and brake needs for over 50 years. Located at 672 South Broadway, just north of Crawford Street in Salina. This internet broadcast is made possible by Don Allison at Santa Fe Carpet in Salina. New carpet prices start at $1.50 per square foot. All colors in plain or plush styles including popular 94-ounce carpet. Financing is available at Santa Fe Carpet, four blocks south of St. John's Military School. Eagle Communications, home of ECTV, high-speed internet, 910 KINA News Talk and 99 KG Country, proud sponsors of Lion Sports Coverage. Listen to the live broadcast on 910KINA.com or on your local Eagle Cable Channel 8. 
Brown Mackey College Salina is proud to support our regional high school sports. Join us this year in cheering on the Minneapolis Lions, the Solomon Gorillas, and the Ellsworth Bearcats. At Robertson Monument, they believe that supporting community activities is very important. That's why they're sponsors of Lion Sports. Minneapolis is a great town to live in, and Robertson Monument hopes you make it to as many games as possible. Santa Fe Carpet is a proud supporter of the Minneapolis Lions. In conjunction with new carpet prices starting at $1.50, Santa Fe Carpet also carries quick step wood laminates, vinyl flooring, tile, even home decor. Salina's bottom line carpet price is at Santa Fe Carpet, four blocks south of St. John's Military School. Bennett Autoplex supports the Minneapolis Lions. At Bennett Autoplex Salina, you'll find a small town family atmosphere with great prices on new and used cars, new GMC trucks and SUVs. Serving their customers since 1957, Bennett Autoplex Salina. So too. Are they both seniors? I think. I think. I know uh, Minneapolis needs to uh, go ahead and uh, shoot with uh, confidence. I think they're uh, just lacking a little confidence in their shot. I think they just need to let it rip. Well, I, do. I think really the difference right now is five point difference between two squads is. Steals the southeast has been able to make in the front court and get the layups or the transition. 
transition ball. Uh, other than that, it's been a pretty even game. Because quite honestly, they haven't been real hot themselves inside. Uh, and their free throws have not been any better than that. The prime difference has been their ability to seal the ball and score on the transition. That's happened several too many times. <laughs> Well, they are letting uh, Christine Russell get away with those uh, reach-in fouls up on top, so they're just going to have to watch it and adjust. Because they're not calling that foul, our guards are getting their pocket picked a little bit. Christine Russell has gotten a couple layups, and uh, Tiffany Cleveland has gotten a few. So they uh, they live off that transition game, and they, they get those points from the uh, turnovers. So Scott's got some point totals for us here because uh, we were – shy just a point or two and now that he has those he'll let us know what the point totals were. Well I needed to go over and double check myself as occasionally I do make mistakes. I know that's hard for you guys to believe but uh, uh, for the uh, Southeast Sling Trojans Christine Russell with seven points, Tiffany Cleveland with ten, Heather Cleveland with four and McKenna White with two. North Minneapolis Lady Lions leading the way. Kelsey Page with 10 points. Four by J.C. Grosson and four by Allie Steinbrock. That's our score, 23-18. We've had three players score. What was that? We've had three players score. Yeah. They've had four. Well, at least we've had some inside point production tonight compared to last two. We had, and we've had a couple of other shots that uh, we missed down low that we've had good position with. And a good look on the low block. A little difference. They're shutting. They're shutting down our perimeter more so than they're for focusing on our post, which has opened up some post play by both uh, Crossan and Steinbrock. But um, our guard play, they have been pressuring us at the top of the key. They've been pressuring us about everywhere. Um, a lot of hand checking going on. Um, just, a, just a rough first half of basketball. Yes, it was. Possession arrow to Minneapolis. And we'll start the second half with the ball as Page plays it in to Macy. Macy back to Page. Left wing, Greg gets a zone. Now Baker gets it down low to Steinbrock. There you go. Nice pass from the high post down to the low post as Baker gets it down to Steinbrock, and we've got an easy basket. Now southeast, Russell way out on top. Looks at a three, passes it up. Brooke Wells, baseline drive no good. The shot by number 21. I had trouble with her. 21 is uh, Hannah Mortimer. The other Mortimer, yes. Ashley Macy out on the outside. Gets the ball down low to Kylie Gregg. Gregg with the ball. Yes. Well, they called oh, one. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> Don't laugh too loud. <laughs> Couldn't find my glasses. They were just hanging right on my shirt anyway. I didn't know what he's looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Looking right at him, Minneapolis to play it in. Out front, Macy with the ball. Gets it off to Greg. Right wing, Page cuts loose. Shot no good, and she's Wells is ridden out of there by Steinbrock. It will be a foul on Allie Steinbrock. Minneapolis sticking with that full court pressure. Mortimer over to Russell on the left wing. Gets it off and that, oh, there's a walk. she had to tightrope the out of bounds line. It is going to be Minneapolis ball as Southeast had it and well, now they turn, oh, it, now around. They turn yeah. it around, don't they? I was going to say, I, I, I thought it would have been off of us. We were laying on the ground. So. Russell with the ball for Southeast. Now the entry pass to Cleveland. And Baker is whistled with a foul. Good night. They play it in. Russell, no look pass, is intercepted by Minneapolis. We have numbers now. Cleveland all the way in. How in the world is that not a foul? I don't know how that wasn't a foul, but 
Steinbrock claims the rebound for, and Russell had both hands on Macy again. And we lose control. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be Southeast ball. Well, I just am amazed why that wasn't a foul, but no call. Russell. And the reach in foul by Baker. That's going to be three on Riley Baker. Well, I hope they call that both ways. <laughs> Third on Minneapolis, one on Southeast. Russell to play it in. 2 3 zone by Minneapolis here on this inbounds play. Ortimer back to Russell. Got her trapped. Out front it goes. Long shot by Cleveland, no good. And Page has the rebound. There we go. Oh, now, now that one was no foul at all, and <laughs> they get uh, they get Brooke Wells on a foul, and that's uh, that's yeah. her third. That's her third. And if they're in foul trouble, well, she did reach in. Oh, uh, right, yeah, there. yeah, but compared to what uh, yeah. I know, I know. So. <laughs> Walker comes in for Baker, and Southeast with some token full court pressure here. Gets it off to Steinbrock. Page with the ball, right wing to Walker. Back to man-to-man -to -man defense by Southeast. Macy out front to Gregg. Entry pass down low, Steinbrock shot off the glass, no good. And Russell has the rebound for Southeast. Southeast, that was a walk and that is the call as Mortimer tried the up and then over. Kind of a hop, skip and a jump there. Uh, 23-20, Minneapolis trailing by three. Man-to-man -man defense by Southeast. High post, Steinbrock shot off a of glass, good. Nice pass by Ali Steinbrock. So who made that? Uh, Page. Kelsey did. Kelsey okay. Page. Mortimer gets it out front to Russell. Looks at a three and passes it up. Sheets with the ball back to Russell. She'll let it rip. No good. And Steinbrock has the rebound. We have numbers if we push the ball. Greg has her shot blocked. And finally they call a reach in foul on Russell. No, nope. oh, Mortimer. It's going to be on be Mortimer. Three, three on Hannah, so. Wells and Hannah Mortimer both with three personal fouls now. Out front it goes. Greg. Page with the ball. Entry pass to Steinbrock. Shot off a of glass and good. Boy, that those points down in the paint are so important. And Steinbrock starting to score down low with the other Cleveland on the bench. And Minneapolis has the lead. Believe it or not, 24-23 had the lead. That shot is good by Russell. First time since the first quarter, I think we had the lead. <coughs> Russell with a shot from the left wing. Now Walker looks at a three, passes it up. Pull that trigger, Bailey. <laughs> You're that open. No, nice Page. in the pass. Shot off the glass, no good, and Southeast has the rebound. 25-24, Southeast. Coach Sager is going to call a quick 30-second timeout. We'll take one, too. Southeast, 25, Minneapolis, 24. A car accident? High winds damaged your property? To protect you, the Scott Osherman Agency is the place to go. American Family Insurance has been providing security and peace of mind for over 80 years. Call the Scott Osherman Agency in Minneapolis, your American Family Insurance agent. The Minneapolis Junior Senior High School linebackers are proud to continue their long-term support of the broadcast of the Lions games. Join them as they support student activities and the teachers of MJSHS. Go Lions, we're with you all the way. Right back in this thing, guys. We we're only you bet. Down we're by right five, there. Yep. That can seem insurmountable at times. They have not expanded. 25 24. 
Southeast with the ball, plays it into Russell in the backcourt. She clears the timeline. Craig guarding one of the Cleveland, or Mortimer's, and there's a travel by Russell. Turnover Southeast, and it will be Minneapolis ball. Russell with the extra step. Macy gets it off to Walker on the left wing. Out front it goes, the pass is tipped by Cleveland. Tiffany Cleveland, who's back in playing with three personal fouls. Mortimer gets it off to Cleveland. Now Russell has the ball, skip pass to Sheets. In the lane it goes, Cleveland running one-hander, no good, and the ball is tipped out of there. It will be Southeast ball. Russell to play it in. Sheets, three-pointer on its way, no good, and Page has the rebound for Minneapolis. <laughs> My goodness. Incredible. <laughs> wow. Well, what we're talking about there, folks, is Kelsey Page has ridden all the way down to the other side. Body movement everywhere, no call. Craig, jump shot, no good. Crossing has the rebound, gets it out front. Walker all alone, three-pointer, no good. And Cleveland, or er, Mortimer has the rebound for Southeast. Entry pass to Cleveland, easy basket. Tiffany Cleveland, a very soft shooter on the inside. She's got uh, 12 points and they've all been down low in the paint. Now would be a good time for that three to. <laughs> she was pushed from behind by Cleveland and Three the seconds. turnover. Three seconds call. Three second call, okay. Russell with the ball out front. Southeast leading 27-24. Uh, looks like they're down the lane. Cleveland goes and she is fouled. She will go to the free throw line to shoot two and the foul is on. J.C. Crossan. That is her second personal foul. Cleveland free throw line, first throw is no good. 27-24, Trojans with the lead. Second throw coming. It is good. 28-24, four point lead by Southeast. Craig. Back out front to Macy. Zone defense by Southeast, a 3-2 variety. Greg's gonna have to cut loose and hit something from the outside. She's all alone. Page shot no good. Walker has the rebound, no, for Minneapolis. Show Macy yes. resets the offense. Walker, long three-pointer, no good. And that foul's going to be on Paige over the back. I believe that's her third. Yes, it is. 108 to go, third quarter, 28-24 Southeast. 138 to go. Four-point lead here, Southeast with the ball. Minneapolis back into the zone. Cleveland out front, hands it off to Sheets. Russell with the ball. Dribble drive, and they're just running clock to try and get into the fourth quarter. Russell down the lane, she goes, gets it off to Cleveland. Shot no good. And Greg has the rebound for Minneapolis. Baseline drive by Macy and the reach in foul by Mortimer. Haley Mortimer. Her third personal foul, so. I think everyone has three, White and uh, Kristen Connolly come back in. Fourth team foul on the Trojans, five on the Lions. Crossing in close shot, no good. Boy, those would, they need to drop. Four point lead, 
Southeast with the ball out front, Sheets. Russell hands it back off to Sheets. 40 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Three point shot on its way, no good. And Greg out hustles Southeast for ball and then crossing. There we go. And White has crossing on the arm. It is a foul. It will be the sixth team foul on, excuse me, fifth team foul on Southeast. And we'll play it in. 33 seconds left. Macy off to Greg. Entry pass to Crossan back out. I believe on Conley, 22. Yes, it is. Fifth team foul, or sixth, excuse me. Sixth team foul, next foul, Minneapolis will be in the one on one. Be nice to get a good look right here to end the third quarter, down four. Entry pass to Crossan. Walker lets it go. That looks good. Nice That's job. <laughs> Bailey Walker hits a three. Nice job, Bailey. That's just exactly what the doctor ordered as Walker has a nice look from three-point range. Now she's got the ball with time running out. Spin move in the lane. No call. Now Cleveland has it down low. It's not going to count. Boy, that was close. Wow, nice. They had the ball all the way down the court as time ran out. The shot after the buzzer did not count, and Minneapolis finds himself down by one at the end of third quarter. 28-27, but Minneapolis playing a little bit better ball there uh, in the third quarter, I thought. Walker hit a three. We got the ball down low and got some points in the paint. So uh, if we keep that up, uh, I think we'll be just fine here in the fourth quarter. 28 to 27 is the score at the end of three. We'll take a break. You're listening to 910candy.com as well as Eagle Communication Channel 8. The Minneapolis Junior Senior High School linebackers are proud to continue their long-term support of the broadcast of the Lions games. Join them as they support student activities and the teachers of MJSHS. Go Lions! We're with you all the way. R&J Tax Services, the most dependable tax service in Salina, is open every Monday through Friday, 52 weeks out of the year. Have tax questions? Call R&J Tax Services in Salina. What a tight game, 28-27. Well, that's kind of what we expected, I think, a tight game. Uh, Southeast, a very, very tough team, especially on their home court, and uh, we're finding that to be true here tonight. Southeast to play it in here to start the final quarter. Leading by one point, Minneapolis uh, playing a little better here in the second half, I think. Starting lineup back in for the Lions to start here the fourth quarter. Long three-pointer, no good by Wells, and the long carom is Tracked down by Kylie Gregg. Nice job by Allie Steinbrock. She tipped it out of there. Oops. And our entry pass is tipped away. Well, let's call. call let's call the. Uh, I'm gonna call an elbow on Macy there. Reach in foul on. Call Riley Baker. Oh. Well behind. So oh, Riley's poor Riley. foul on that one. Both teams in the one and one now. Sheets with the ball for Southeast. Back out front to Russell. Now on the baseline, Wells. Down low, they try to get it. Uh, Minneapolis doing a good job on defense. Russell all the way in, layup, good. You can tell they score most of their points off of layups. Macy with the ball. Oh, wow. Thank Good you. Arm. Foul call on Southeast. Sorry, guys. And that is on Russell for the reach in foul. I Older think it's probably second. just her second. I better for two. The only second one they've called, anyway. Macy to the free throw line. She'll shoot eight, one, and one. Minneapolis in the bonus here. Free throw, no good. And a lane infraction on Minneapolis. I think Steinbrock was in there a little early. Would not have counted if she would have made it. 
Sheets with the ball. Minneapolis in a 3-2 zone defense here as Southeast trying to find an opening. Russell will let it go from the outside. And White over the back. And we'll go right back to the free throw line. This time Steinbrock will have the one and one. That's the eighth team foul on Southeast. Steinbrock, one of our better free throw shooters. Let's see if we can get both of them to drop right here. First one, good. Hits the front end of the one and one. And Minneapolis just down two here in the fourth quarter. Southeast leading 30, 28. Steinbrock, second throw on its way. Short off the front of the rim and White with the rebound for Southeast. Left wing back out front to Russell. Wells has a touch, now back to Russell. And a nice steal by Page as the skip pass to Wells is intercepted. Minneapolis has the ball now. Now dribble drive by Page, shot, no good. And Steinbrock fighting for that loose ball, but Tiffany Cleveland comes out of there with the ball. Hands it off to Christine Russell. Nice zone defense here by Minneapolis. We're just trying to make him shoot over the top and Wells tries one that it's an air ball. Out of bounds it goes. Anna Mortimer back in and Russell will get a breather. 30 to 28, Lady Lions trail by two with uh, just under six minutes left to go in the ball game. Macy with the ball out on top. Gets it to Greg on the right wing. Now Steinbrock. Looks for a cutter, Baker's there, playing with four fouls. Macy all the way in, shot, good. Ashlyn Macy with a one-hand runner on the baseline. Her first points of the night, we needed him right there. She ties the ball game at 30, Mike. Excellent move there by Ashlyn Macy. Hits the baseline shot, and we have a new ball game. Mortimer gets it off to Wells, entry pass to White, down low it goes to Cleveland. Oh, she didn't shoot. Made everything, she's, and she's over the back again. I believe White over the back of Page, and we'll go shoot free throws one more time. Ninth team foul, so next will be double bonus time for the Lions. Lions with 16 fouls. Kelsey Page to the line. Two or three quick fouls here on White here in the fourth quarter. And Kelsey will go to the free throw line for the one and one. First throw on its way, it is good. Well, we take the lead for the second time in this half. 31-30. Let's keep it for good now. Second throw on its way. It rolls in and Minneapolis is up two points. Mortimer with the ball clears the timeline for Southeast, Wells, back to Sheets, tries a three-pointer, no good. Boy, Wells with a big rebound. Cleveland way over the back, and Mortimer has the rebound and stick back. And we're all tied up. Who can make the least mistakes now? The last Drag entry pass to Baker, and it is intercepted by White. Tied up at 32 here, 440 left to go here in the ball game. Sheets with the ball on the right wing. They're in no hurry. Well, I say that, and there's a long shot, no good, and it's gonna be a tie up. Page gets on the floor for that loose ball with Sheets. Possession arrow to Minneapolis. Crossing and Walker to check in for Baker and Drag as they check in. Page, go ahead. Kylie Gregg and no points tonight, Mike, and she had a big night for us on Tuesday, and unfortunately she's not had much to look at tonight. Walker hands it back to Macy. They're looking to trap. Sheets hounding uh, Page. Now Walker has the ball off to Macy. Baseline drive gets it off to Steinbrock, back to Walker. 
Boy, Walker had a pretty good look at a three, has hit one earlier. I think we're looking to take it low. Now Page has the ball, and we throw it away. They overplay and trap. Uh -oh. Good hustle by Ashland. She does get the foul, but uh, she hustled back and showed some speed. Mortimer will go she'll, to the free throw line to shoot two. She'll make her earn them at the free throw line. Anna Mortimer, 5'5", uh, five, five junior. And Coach Weatherman wants to talk about it. It's a tie ball game with 3.45 left in this contest. Southeast will be shooting free throws, and we'll be back with the final three and a half minutes here in just a minute. It's fast, it's furious, and it's fun. It's Minneapolis Raceway. Minneapolis Raceway has brought you exciting races to Central Kansas and will continue the tradition. Minneapolis Raceway will give you and your family some of the most exciting races ever seen. Go Lions! At Lambert Insurance, Sue Clinton can make shopping for insurance easy. With insurance plans changing all the time and costs increasing constantly, getting coverage you need at affordable rates can be a challenge. Let Lambert Insurance in Minneapolis help. Where do you go when you need groceries? Jeans IGA, of course. Jeans is proud to be a sponsor of Minneapolis Sports in hopes that you'll encourage your children to be as competitive in the classroom as they are in sports. Jeans IGA, a proud sponsor of today's game. The State Bank of Delphus and Glasgow and the Ottawa County Bank in Minneapolis are locally owned community banks committed to making your banking experience as easy and personal as possible. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to the score tonight at the 32. Southeast of Saline, Gibson, Kansas. Uh, we're playing the Purples here tonight. Lady Lions are in a tight ball game. Free throw no good. As Mortimer goes to the free throw line to shoot two. Second one on its way. It's no good. And Crossan has the rebound for Minneapolis. We almost throw it away, but Russell is whistled with the reach in foul. Tell you that, get back to that foul by Macy. Macy hustled down the floor. She uh, she fouled her hard, and she fouled her hard. Save the easy two, the easy two points. Two, made her go to the line to force it. She misses them both. Good foul. Yeah. I call that a good foul. That was pure hustle by Ashland to come down. Bailey Walker at the line. Tenth foul now on the Trojans. Free throw is no good. Off the... Right side of the rim, Walker will get the second one as southeast over the limit. Minneapolis shooting two from here on out. Every foul. That's good. Every point a premium here tonight. Minneapolis leading by one, 33-32. Russell out on top. Now Wells on the right wing. White. The ball is tipped by Cross, and oh, nice job by J.C. to get a hand on that. Jumps into the passing lane, and Minneapolis gets the ball. Big play by Cross and Page down on the low post, low block, and uh, Minneapolis spreading the floor here with three minutes left in the contest. Boy, almost a five-second call. Macy gets it off, but Weatherman calls a quick timeout, and we'll take one, too. Full timeout, Minneapolis leading by one now, 33-32. John McIntyre Salina, more than just supporting your future, supporting the future of the community. Call 1-877-557-5454 or go online to brownmackey.com. CNR Plating and Kevin's crew would like to take this time to thank their many friends and customers for making their business what it is today. CNR Plating, Alliance sports backer, wants to wish the Minneapolis Lions a great season. CNR Plating, Alliance sports backer. Salina Spring and Axle, specializing in all your suspension, alignment, and brake needs for over 50 years. Located at 672 South Broadway, just north of Crawford Street in Salina. Welcome back to Gibson, Kansas, Southeast Saline High School as Minneapolis League Alliance 
had the one point lead and the ball here with 3.02 left to go. Here we go, Steinbrock with the ball. Gets it off the page, been guarded by Cleveland. Boy, they overplay, don't they? Crossing with the ball back out front to Walker. We're gonna work some clock here. I'm kind of surprised about that. As they now down low, Steinbrock has the ball. And Walker is called for the... Three seconds. Three seconds. Three second violation on Walker. Mercy. And she must have came backside and did not see it. Russell out front to Sheets. 3-2 zone by Minneapolis. The long arms of J.C. Crossan created the turnover last time. Let's see if we can get another one. Russell from the elbow, no good. Good hustle by Walker there. Another shot is up and in by Wells. Her first points of the night as she gets a big jumper right there. And we lose control of the ball as we clear half court. Now Mortimer, shot off the glass is good. Wow, just like that, they take the lead and score two more. Four point uh, swing right there, 36 to 33. As two turnovers, two points, there are two baskets and uh, kind of the way that their MO, isn't it? They're very quick. They are very quick and they put the ball, they go after the loose ball and they took it right down, took it down quickly and they got the, got the bucket right there after the tournament. 36 to 33, we'll take a real quick break. You're listening to 910 canadacom as well as Eagle Communication Channel 8. This internet broadcast is made possible by Don Allison at Santa Fe Carpet in Salina. New carpet prices start at $1.50 per square foot. All colors in plain or plush styles, including popular 94 ounce carpet. Financing is available at Santa Fe Carpet, four blocks south of St. John's Military School. Eagle Communications, home of ECTV, high-speed internet, 910 KINA News Talk and 99 KG Country, proud sponsors of Lions Sports Coverage. Listen to the live broadcast on 910KINA.com or on your local Eagle Cable Channel 8. Welcome back, everybody. Southeast of Saline, Gibson, Kansas. Southeast of Saline and Minneapolis in a hotly contested uh, girls varsity game here, leading by three, the Southeast Purple Trojans. And Minneapolis trying to uh, get a bucket here as they're, and there's the foul by Russell, which was not called in the first half, but is called here in the second half. Macy will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Her fourth personal. Anyone else send foul trouble for Southeast? No, four, they've just got a bunch for three, but nobody else with four. First throw on its way, no good. 141 remaining. Greg enters the contest, and Walker gets a breather. Buck 41 left in the contest. Second free throw, no good, and Wells has the rebound for Southeast. Minneapolis is probably going to have to come out of this zone. Yeah, yeah they're just going to do a little weave at the top. And, and yeah, Macy's out of it now. We up. match up. Cleveland with the ball. As well as they're shooting free throws, I think that foul. Blocking foul called on Macy, and that will send... Russell to the free throw line to shoot a one and one. Coach Weatherman calling another timeout, 30 second timeout. We'll take one two, Minneapolis trailing by three, 36-33. Brown Mackey College Salina is proud to support our regional high school sports. Join us this year in cheering on the Minneapolis Lions the Solomon Gorillas and the Ellsworth Bearcats. At Robertson Monument, they believe that supporting community activities is very important. That's why they're sponsors of Lion Sports. Minneapolis is a great town to live in, and Robertson Monument hopes you make it to as many games as possible. 
Santa Fe Carpet is a proud supporter of the Minneapolis Lions. In conjunction with new carpet prices starting at $1.50, Santa Fe Carpet also carries quick step wood laminates, vinyl flooring, tile, even home decor. Salina's bottom line carpet price is at Santa Fe Carpet, four blocks south of St. John's Military School. Welcome back as Russell at the line to shoot a one on one and she makes the front end. That's a four point lead, a two position ball game now for Southeast. Russell's second throw on its way. It is good also. Bragg has the ball for Minneapolis. Gets it off to Page. Looks inside, now out front to Crossan. Entry pass to Steinbrock is tipped out of there and Mortimer has it. Turnover Minneapolis. That should just about do it for Minneapolis. Mortimer has the ball, gets it off to Russell. And a blocking foul on Gregg as Christine Russell will go right back to the free throw line. Looks like Christine Russell and uh, her scoring is by Tiffany Cleveland and Christine Russell. <laughs> Got a lot of the points. Free throw, good. And a true point guard hits her free throws down the line. And she's definitely hitting them. Three in a row so far here late in this ball game. Puts Southeast. Five for seven. Up by nine. seven. Macy with the ball in a hurry. Minneapolis needs to shoot quick. Page all the way in. And she is fouled. They're going to count the basket. And that's five. And that's Russell's fifth foul. She got conked on the head. Looked like she caught the elbow, but it's also definitely a blocking foul. That will put Paige at the free throw line here. Let's try to get this down to a four point deficit here as Paige will get the and one and Coach Sager has a minute or so to. Which person's hurting the worst here? Who got the foul? <laughs> it will be White that comes in for Russell. Minneapolis will counter and send in Riley Baker. Allie Steinbrock heads to the bench for a breather. 36 <laughs> seconds left, and Coach Sager is going to call a full timeout to talk about it here as we're in the waning moments of this contest. Minneapolis trailing by five, and we'll be back after this one-minute timeout. Bennett Autoplex supports the Minneapolis Lions. At Bennett Autoplex Salon, you'll find a small town family atmosphere with great prices on new and used cars, new GMC trucks, and SUVs. Serving their customers since 1957, Bennett Autoplex Salon. to Southeast of Saline High School. Lions trail by five, 40 to 35, 36.5 seconds left in the ball game, Mike. You know, Scott, we just, I thought we had things under control. Yeah, we were back in the ball game. We were hit by one point and uh, looking good here in the fourth quarter. And then all of a sudden the old turnover bug got us. And we find ourselves down by three points. Southeast built that up to seven. Now we're down by five. With not enough time on the clock, we'll see if Paige can hit that when she misses it. It goes off the foot of Cleveland. That's who you want to foul right there. Oh, there's a walk right there. 
Wells, and there's another walk, actually. Wow. Sheets drug her foot, along, Cleveland drug hers also. And we're gonna be whistled with the reach-in foul. Kylie Gregg, that's her third personal foul. Sheets to the free throw line. First throw is up and in. Her first points of the night. And she hits them right there, so. 41-35, 27 seconds left in this contest. That one's off the front of the rim, no good, and she gets her own rebound. A fight for the loose ball. White had to hand on it last. It will be Minneapolis ball. That's not good business when uh, the shooter gets her own rebound on a free throw. Full timeout taken by Coach Weatherman, and we'll take one, too, with just 24 seconds left in this contest. We're trailing by six. back everybody we're at southeast of Saline, gypsum kansas minneapolis lady lions are in a contest with the lady trojans here tonight we're down six points with just 20 seconds left in this contest we throw over the top walker somebody needs to shoot and page does three-pointer on its way no good greg has the rebound and her jump shot is up and in seven seconds down by four, and a quick foul by Minneapolis says Crossan has a... Waited too long on that one, Dale. Yep. 41 to 37, down by four, 5.4 seconds left. Double all sheets bonus. all the way around. Yep. Sheets back to the free throw line to shoot two now as we're over the limit. With just five and a half seconds left in the contest, first free throw is good. 42-37, they're ahead by a five. That one is good also. Crossan gets it into Page. Kelsey all the way in, has the ball stolen by Mortimer, and that's the way the contest will end. 43-37, southeast by six. And we'll be back with some point totals and the boys' action here in about two minutes. Back to Gypsum, Kansas, in the southeast of Saline. High school, junior high school. Lady Lions just lose by a score of 43 to 37 in the tight clock game. We were down by five and a half. Climb back in it, led by one and one point in the third quarter, led by one and one point in the fourth quarter. Looked like we were trying to run some clock. So the game away there in the fourth quarter. And the game was an enigma with the referees. Uh, at times they wouldn't call anything, it didn't seem. And then at other times, like we were ahead by a point, they step up and call a three second violation on uh, off guard that's kind of wandered in the lane on the backside. I wasn't watching, I don't know, she might have been camped out there, but uh, it, you wouldn't expect to see a three second call. I didn't detect uh, that call either. It was kind of surprising. I thought maybe she had pushed. Uh, 
trying to get better position for the rebound, but uh, three second was the call. It was kind of surprising on the off guard over there. And then uh, next trip down the court, we stumbled, going across the half court line, moving the ball, and all of a sudden we're down by four, three or four points. And that's all she wrote for the rest of the game. And one thing about Southeast, uh, they know they take advantage of those turnovers. If they uh, they get the steal or the tip pass, and uh, they're a layup shooting team, they they take uh, full advantage of that transition game. They're good at it, and that's where they uh, they score their points. Uh, they're a much better team running uh, the transition than they are in the half court set. Because I I thought we outplayed them when we were in our half court set, but. Uh, it took us a while to realize uh, they were beating us back big time on that press, and uh, they must have scored eight, ten points very, very easily uh, just off uh, throwing over the top against our full court pressure. We did a better job, though, uh, shutting down Tiffany Cleveland in the second half, but, uh, but what uh, happened was Christine Russell did, uh, they, she hurt us. She hurt us in the second half. She came out in the second half. She had a good first half. But she's a quality point guard. She hit her free throws down the line when she needed to. She ran the court. She ran the floor. And basically, Tiffany Cleveland and Christine Russell, they're the ones that beat us tonight. Both of them seniors. And uh, they played like seniors should, and they come away with the victory tonight. So, I don't know. A tough loss for Lions. They played well, though, at times. At other times, they kind of struggled. But for the majority of the game, I felt like a much better performance tonight than we did against Republic County. I definitely. Uh, I think one thing they're going to learn or take from this game right here, it doesn't matter what kind of defense you're playing. You have to hustle back on defense. You're in a full court press, and you're pressing all over the floor. You're trapping. But uh, once the ball is thrown over or by you, you have got to race back to get the paint. That's help defense, and they're going to need it because they're, they're, uh, they've got numbers on you. You have got to get back on defense, and uh, our girls are just not getting back at all. No. No. Lady Lions lose two in a row now. Uh, record falls to five and two. Where do we go Tuesday? Uh, I've got that information here somewhere. Go ahead and give the score. Sorry about that. Uh, scoring for uh, Southeast to Celine. Uh, Brooke Wells with two points. Kind of surprising there. I, uh, she's a pretty good ball player. Held her to two points. Uh, McKenna White with two. Heather Cleveland with four. Hannah Mortimer with four. Shelby Sheets with three. All three, four, uh, three, three throws in the fourth quarter. Tiffany Cleveland with 13 and Christine Russell with 15 <clears throat> for Southeast Lane. For the Lady Lions, uh, Ashlyn Macy with two, Kylie Gregg with two, Bailey Walker with four, as well as J.C. Crossan with four, nine by Allie Steinbrock, and 16 by Kelsey Page. So, the road doesn't get any easier, guys. Next Tuesday, we host Play Center. That won't be a sneeze by any stretch of the imagination. And then next Friday, we travel to Beloit. So. It's time to knuckle under for the Lady Lions and, <laughs> and get get busy. Well, I much improved over the Republic County contest earlier this week. I thought we, as Scott mentioned, uh, I thought we played uh, much better basketball here tonight. But uh, Southeast, a lot like uh, Bloyd and Republic County play, uh, that pressure defense and uh, Christine Rudd, those those girls are ball hawking little guards, and they're reaching in and trying to slap that ball away any chance they can. And uh, here tonight, they were up to the task, not overly uh, huge by any stretch of the imagination. They might have had one girl that's 5'9 to play it every now and then, but for the most part, not a tall team, uh, and uh, but a very physical team for their size, I thought. Well, Coach Weatherman's here to join us. Coach, uh, I was just mentioning Southeast, uh, not a big team, but man, they're physical for no bigger than they are. Yeah, they're, they're quick, they're physical, and they're fast. Yeah, the speed, I felt like, uh, 
their speed. We knew their speed coming in was going to be a factor because they, they uh, at least from what I'd heard, they're very quick and very fast, and they work. Uh, it's it's frustrating from a uh, from an announcer standpoint, and I'm sure a coach's standpoint, that uh, there was a lot of missed calls tonight in a blunt way, nicely putting it, but. Uh, just you can't you got you can't let that blow a game. The girls they had to come out and they made some adjustments, especially in the second half, which I felt like got us back into the ball game. It's just that Southeast Elite finished it at the end. Yeah, and you're exactly right. Uh, I felt the first half, you know, we didn't execute our game plan quite the way we wanted to in the first half. You know, we we got a little bit impatient. And um, we took some early shots in our offense. And, and I told the girls, we like to play fast, but we don't want to play out of control. And Southeast has, Southeast can get you into a game that's a little bit out of control. And they did that just the first half. And we, we, we regrouped at halftime. And, and I felt like we were, ex you know, came out and started executing what, you know, our game plan the way we wanted to. Got that thing, got a you know, five-point deficit at halftime, got that lead with 33 to 32 with about four minutes to go, three and a half minutes to go. And, and then we got impatient on a couple positions where we had a chance to, to move that lead out to three or four. And, you know, that impatience led to some easy baskets for Southeast Lane, and, and, you know, we had a hard time making those up. Well, I, I thought uh, we played a uh, little better ball tonight than we did uh, against Republic County. I thought we handled the pressure fairly fairly decent. Uh, one thing I think the girls will probably take from this match or this game is uh, the importance to get back on defense. I think we were a little bit lackadaisical about getting back, uh, and boy, they uh, cherry-picked on us a couple times. Uh, Boy, they just, they're a really good passing ball club, and uh, Scott and I talked about it. You know, uh, three-fourths of their baskets are layups, and uh, that's their game. It's a transition game. They just, I think, in a half-court set, uh, they're not that effective. They uh, they don't really, oh, well, the Cleveland girl scored down low, but that was just on fast break transition points. But uh, in the half-court set, I don't think they're that effective. Yeah, that's, we talked about that, you know, it, it depended on, of course, the Sager girl, Coach Sager's daughter, uh, was in the hospital earlier today uh, with the flu, and and she kind of gives them uh, an outside threat. They didn't have her tonight, you know. And we talked about that in practice yesterday. How they're going to rely on three things: they're going to rely on getting the ball, the basket, on the dribble drive. It, it, you know, Sager in there, they're going to have an opportunity to have somebody sit in the three-point line, and they're going to shoot layups. You know, we, and our goal was to eliminate. You know, as much as that as possible. Of course, you can't take everything away from them because they got too many, too many weapons. But in, in the end, you know, we, we just need to be a little bit more disciplined. You know, like you said, they got some easy transition buckets. That's, you know, we had we, we tried to take away a couple offensive rebounders tonight and just just get back, just not to allow them to get those laps. And, and we didn't follow our assignments, and, and that kind of hurt us. You know, and they, you know, and give Southeast Lane some credit. One for seven from the free throw line in the first half, eight for 12 in the second half. They hit them when they needed to. Yeah, and, stretch. and historically, uh, Russell Grill, you know, last couple of years hadn't been a very good free throw shooter. We put her on the line <laughs> twice there in the fourth quarter. She knocks all four down. Yeah. So, you know, Southeast played a good game. Can I give them a lot of credit? You know, let's, uh, let's, let's go back to, uh, uh, felt like a, on a positive side for us, we were able to, especially in the first half, but even the second half, Allie Steinbrock, we got some balls down to her in the low block. And, and she finished and was able to get some points. Um, we had a, I felt like our inside-outside game where we were passing the ball down, getting it back out. We had some good looks at different times. Mike said it earlier, and I'll agree with, uh, with him as well, that a much better performance in our opinion than on Tuesday night. Uh, they just came out. They had a little bit more intensity, but they've moved the ball better. Yeah, and and that we really tried to preach that the last two nights in practice about running some offense and, and getting better shots. Uh, you know, some of the shots that we were taking the other night against Republic County weren't bad shots if they're the fifth or sixth pass 
in the offense. But we're taking early, you know, we were taking some early shots there at night. That's, you know, that was what we talked about start the game. And, and I felt like we were about three or four possessions there in the first half. We came down and, and either made one pass or didn't make a pass and didn't get very good shots. And we talked about that at halftime. I really felt that was why we were able to make up that de deficit and take the lead because we were more patient with our offense and got better shots. I thought we looked pretty good there in the fourth quarter, but we looked more like our, the team I've been watching all year long. They, they pretty much took control of the ball game, and I thought we were in just pretty good shape. And uh, it might have been, as you mentioned, uh, patience uh, wasn't there. We had a couple of quick turnovers, and boy, we opened the door for them, and that's their bread and butter. You open the door, and away they went, and then all of a sudden, we were down five, and then we were down seven. So it, they... They're just really quick to take advantage of any turnover that uh, we're able to provide for. <laughs> yeah, they can they can score quickly, that's for sure. Doesn't get any easier. We uh, are at home Tuesday night against Clay Center than on the road Friday night against Beloit, so it doesn't get any easier the next two games. No, and, you know, all Christmas break we talked about, this four-game stretch might be the toughest four-game stretch we'll see all year, and, and, and I told the girls, you know, even though we're 0-2 at the start of this thing, it, you know, we're going to find out a lot about ourselves next week. I, we get play center. We're going to have to. We're going to have to get our shoes tightened up and come out ready to play. Because right now, at this point in the season, we can't afford to drop three in a row. The play center is going to be a, a good, a tough matchup with us. He got a nice inside player, but uh, you know, I, yeah, I really am glad right now. I guess. To find, you know, find out a little bit more about us than we did in the five games before Christmas. You know, you know, the, the opponents have gotten a little bit better, and and like I said, we're finding out what kind of basketball team we're capable of being. I've seen some um, good things the last two games against the two teams I thought might be the two best teams in the league in the season, and we had we had both of them had opportunity to beat both of them. So, you know, I told them I said we just got to tighten the screws on a few things with our with our game, and you know. We could be beating these teams, so. Yeah. And we get to be, and we get to play them again. Yeah. So that's a great thing yeah. about our league. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, coach, we'll let you get. Uh, thank you for coming up and chatting with us. We appreciate it. Uh, we will be back with you on all in the air Tuesday night uh, at home. So folks, come on out. It's a great bunch of girls to watch. It's a lot of fun. So if you uh, can make it, come on out and cheer them on. So, coach, Thanks, thank you guys. You. Good game. Thank you. Lady Lions uh, come up short tonight, 47, or excuse me, 43 to 37 against the Southeast Sling Trojans, and uh, it's uh, you know, it's, the coach said it, they are a they are a solid basketball team, Southeast Sling, but Minneapolis is too. Well, we ran into two teams, uh, two in a row, uh, Republic County and uh, Southeast. Both teams have lots of seniors on their ball club. They play, play two or three seniors. Republic County had two or three, and Southeast. Senior leadership is a big thing, and those girls, they're tough, and uh, it's just the type of defense they play. We're gonna see the same thing from Beloit, and uh, don't know how many seniors they have, but that's that type of ball that we're gonna have to get accustomed to, because that's that's pressure defense, and if you fold to it, uh, yeah, you, you won't win. <laughs> that's just, those are tough. Well, we'll be back with the boys' contest in a few minutes. If you're listening online, you'll need to sign off and get back on. Otherwise, we'll be back with you on uh, Stanley. Communications in a few.